If there isn't a lighter side to genocide, you best fabricate one out of nothingness because the consequences of not doing it, of not having a laugh and not being able to retain your sanity can be very dire indeed. Dated, 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 I mean, if you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. Dated, 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 dated. I mean, if you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. And I'm glad I come from New Zealand where uh, our geographical knowledge doesn't make us think that the Gaza Strip is someplace in Reno with a lot of titty bars. Oh, really? Is a dumb American? I thought it was a gambling casino. Dang. <laughs> get on down to the Gaza Strip. You might get lucky. <laughs> I'm not making it up. There actually is. But no, I'm just like. Dave. 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 I mean, if you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah. There, there you go. Exactly. And hopefully on a road where there's no people and lots of trees. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody understands that it's a joke, you know, and it's like nobody, nobody took it seriously. It's just, it's just the fact that it's really, really funny and done in that kind of like weird voice that I can do. I always thought that uh, uh, the KKK should release a Christmas album called White Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Dated, 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 yeah, there you go, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, you're original in your perspective, though, Vinny. You know, I mean, you're unique in your perspective of reality. Nobody else can have that. And, and changing the inner world in order to change the outer world is the only real solution that we've got. Because once people discover who and what they are, they realise that everybody else is like that as well. I mean, we're all just boarding houses and we get to these positions and we do things, you know. But the people in government, all the people that are running this whole control group, they're just people. And once we realise that and we realise that we're all on this earth together and that these guys aren't actually our rulers, they're actually our employees and we can change things. But people have to change their inner perspective in order to do that. You know, they've got to change their perspective of who and what they are and, and see their uniqueness. And I mean, you can prove that you are original because no one else has your perspective, you know what I mean? Nobody else will ever see the world through the eyes of any Eastwood, no matter how close that perspective comes. And that's what makes you, you, that perspective. Mm. You know? well, I, Once I we can know. see that in ourselves, we see that in ourselves, and we realize the uniqueness of ourselves and the perfection <coughs> of ourselves as well, because 
you're perfect at being Vinny East, but even if you've got flaws and you may be still finding your way through the mess and you may not have everything right, you're still perfect at being you and no one else can do that. You know? mm, I, so, I agree. You're an individual and you're also part of the collective at the same time. Look at it this way. You got salt and you got soup and you put it together. Now try to count the salts in the soup. You can't. They're, they're one, they're one soup, but yet at the same time, the salt and the soup are still two separate things, otherwise you wouldn't have two different words for it. They're two separate things, but it, when they come together, they're one. People don't, re people put collectivism and individualism against each other in a dichotomy, and no matter which way you go, it, it inevitably leads back to tyranny. When you respect that both are true at the same time, then it deletes the conundrum you're having. It's like, okay, I can be a unique individual and a part of the collective. Both are true. Up exists uh, right alongside of down. Left exists with right. We're living in a fractal, you know. There's uh, there's separation and there's oneness, both at the same time. They're both true. And it's just crazy to, to, to try to pit the ideas against each other. But it's like a cat trying to rip its own tail apart. Why? I'm so fascinated by this back and forth. I was just like feeling like I was just a bystander. It was really interesting. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, yes. We love you. Don't worry. There. Oh no, you guys are hilarious. <laughs> really enjoying this. Indeed. I mean, if you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah. There, there you go. Exactly. How much more insecure than a 14-year-old emo girl do you have to be to think, to, to genuinely believe that the only way to keep yourself safe in your reality is to control and dominate everybody else? That is like the epitome of insecurity and immaturity and denial and, you know, they're caught in their own matrix way more than we are because they forgot one key thing. You can't be the warden without being in the prison. And yeah, everybody, you know, everybody check out uh, the Vinny Eastwood show. Otherwise, kiss and girl, rape your dog, and send it the homage to live for the rest of your life. Yeah, or get one of those, those patsies to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I've got to take a wiki link. People accuse me of being unprofessional, and, and you know, they're, they're right to a certain degree, but my argument is the world's currently run by professionals. How's that working out for you? Yeah. I mean, when, when, you, when, you think the word, <laughs> when you think the word professional, do you think fun, friendly, happy, and, and, uh, and inspiring? No, you frickin' don't. You think of dull, predictable, and uh, 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 proficient, basically. It's, it's basically just an, an efficiency game, so that the possibilities are quite small. There's no, there's, there's very little room for error. But I think what a lot of professionals really are starting to do massively wrong is avoid any kind of failure whatsoever. And in so doing, they don't really learn anything a lot of the time. Not, nothing radical anyway, by taking these big risks. When I, when I think of professional, I think of Bill Gates okay. st sticking a three foot vaccination needle in my ass. That's, Hey guys, I actually have a, something to contribute to this point. Dave, remember I told you about uh, the new person that I met that was a lawyer and is now a therapist? Uh huh. And you have a picture yeah. of her climbing and the I tree. Have her, I, and I got her and I got her to climb a tree on our walk. <laughs> I've never um, seen a lawyer in a tree before until then. Thank you for that new. No, experience. not even not even a lawyer, but a lawyer therapist. See, as <laughs> much as you'd like to see lawyers hang, as much as you'd like to see lawyers hanging from trees, you just don't see it that often. <laughs> Oh, right. Um, the thing was, that she was sharing with me just how she got out of the, the law profession that she was in for 20 years. And she ended up going to be a therapist, thinking that that would be somehow better. And then she realized quickly that that was not exactly the thing that she was wanting to do either. Because, you know, she's a bright, sunshiny person, but she had been kind of glossed over with this veneer of professionalism that has really kept her from reaching people and so she was drawn to me because of what I do is different than what therapists do and it's much more personal and you know you actually get somewhere <laughs> like, so she by the end of our, our walk together she was, was like I really kind of want to climb that tree but she was second guessing herself and being like well I don't know if I should because you know that's not really like in my realm of 
you know, practices. So they go randomly go climb trees. <laughs> and so she was climbing trees and running up on off the cliff and not off the cliff, but she was like on these caves that were on the side of the cliff and just really like laughing like a child. And it, it blew my paradigms out of the water. Just here I am thinking like, oh my God, who am I? How, who am I to help this lawyer, therapist lady who was like, this pillar of respect in the community? Help her through her baggage, you know. Like, yeah. and so it was just really evident to me to see that that kind of structure is really not as sturdy as I once thought it was. You know. Yeah. So she, people so she, are people. So, so she was just like, well, being an Esquire for the Crown Corporation wasn't working out for me, so maybe the MK Ultra industry might be more fun. But then she found out that didn't work for her either, so climbing trees is now her new profession. Oh, yeah. I had a really interesting talk with her about the direction she wanted to take with her practice. Since she uh, started climbing yeah, trees, bye. since she started climbing trees for a living, has she had uh, 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 more roots in her life? What you're doing is just like your salt in the soup analogy, is you're taking two things that currently exist, combining them together in a way nobody's ever done, and that actually does create in indeed something new. Uh, steel alloys and things of that nature have been made this way. And isn't that really what creativity is? Working with yeah. what currently exists in reality and then reworking it with your own ideas and then creating something new. I know that I'm not crazy at all, and here's how I know. The voices in my head told me so, and I trust them. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> if tech maintenance isn't on your list of priorities, you've got your priorities uh, uh, in, the, in the wrong areas, mate. I mean, really, really, you've got to maintain your outdoor areas just as much as you do your indoor ones. But anyway, you're getting off the topic. He's talking about the Dick and Cider Corporation soon. <laughs> yeah, Dick and Cider. Every woman likes a little dick insider now and then. Yeah. Oh god, <laughs> I, I love the ad for that. No, there's a, there's a little kid, like, they're, they're advertising the, uh, the Dick Insider Corporation, and, and he goes, My mum loves a dick insider. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Even my wife likes a little dick insider now and then. All the ladies love dick insider. You know, it's just going on and on with all wow. these different puns. And yeah, I'm like, oh, it's, it's really just already gone too far, bro. Have you ever noticed how sometimes describing how somebody else takes it too far, you inadvertently take it too far yourself? Yeah. Yes. Just, and, and the same principle is true when you've got a dick inside of it. Yeah. <laughs> because when, if, you're, if you're taking it too far, you've definitely got a dick inside of it. Well, you know, I mean, if you can't take it uh -oh. inside of it too far, what can you? Um, and if you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. So, so you shouldn't be judging yourself by any other parameters except your own. And, and what you, the information that you're getting and what you're doing with that information and, and what you're creating with all the potential that you've got. You know, that's what we're all here to do. And if we can see that in ourselves and respect ourselves enough to understand our imperfection, then I believe we can respect others and all the barriers break down. And once we've got that respect for each other, we can stand up against anything government's doing because government's a fiction. It's just an idea that people made up. Yeah, it's it's kind of, it's kind of like pe pe a lot of people think that just because words are written on paper and we call it law, that it magically prevents crime. Like it's a magical piece of paper, and anything you write on that paper, all these magical force fields and things come up and just magically prevent criminals from committing crimes. Because you know, people always say, you know, when you when you talk about you know corporate corruption and government and stuff, it's like. But that's illegal! If anyone was doing that, they'd be in jail. Really, because it's written on a piece of fucking paper that puts up a magic veil of protection. Yeah. Right! Ignorance of the law is no excuse, and that's why they create thousands of laws every year. <laughs> to make sure that, <laughs> that are thousands of pages long each. <laughs> hey, I, got, I, gotta, I gotta hand it into the um, Australian Prime Minister, though. He, he's the only one that I've ever seen who actually admitted that for every new law you create, it creates a crime. Mm -hmm. 
Oh well, that's very nice of him. I'm sure that he's uh, very happy to be saying that when he's creating two, three laws a day. Yeah, totally. And he he just totally looks like you know Agent Smith from the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he actually does look a little bit like Hugo Weaving. That doesn't even occur to me, bro. <laughs> If you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. Hey, do us a favor Thank you first. Thank so much for inviting me on. Do us a favor um, first, kind of like we did on Johnny Gilson's show. Why don't you give people your information so they can like stalk you on Facebook and YouTube and stuff. Um, okay, well, I really just like people find me through my website, because that's how they can find me on the other stuff, too. Just KaterinaEdwards.com. K-A-T-E-R-I-N-A-E-D-W-A-R-D-S.com. Oh, I thought it was Katriana. No, it's not Katriana, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Donnie's like, Katriana. It's like, it's not Katriana. It's Katriana. I have never heard that iteration of my name before. That is the very first time. He was a winner. It sounds like the name of Russian prostitute. Exactly. <laughs> if people look into a lot of what um, Putin has been doing, um, you know, people notice that he seems to be against the the globalists and for the people, and then the other half are saying, "Oh no, no, that's just a psyop. He's with them. He's not for the people." I have a third option. A third op the third option is very simple. He's an intelligent man and he's a chess player, not a checkers player, and he plays to win. So if he sees that going against his fellow globalists and aligning with the people gives him the winning move, he's going to take it. And if the original New World Order plan of annihilating everybody was going to win, he would take that. He doesn't care about the people. It's not, about, it's not even about caring or not caring. He's in a chess game, and he's in it to win. So it's siding with, the, with humanity against his globalist peers is going to win him that chess game, then that's what he's going to do. Because that's all it is to him is a game of chess. He's a smart man, and he's playing to win. Yeah, and it's he not, knows that you only get out what you put in. Yeah, what you put in. Oh, there's actually a joke about that. A bass drum, a thimble, and a cymbal fell off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> If you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. I've got to take a wiki leak. You know, a lot of these new age types, they're so materialistic and trying to manifest stuff what they don't realize is what the universe does is manifest opportunity not stuff it's up to you to listen to your intuition and recognize the opportunity and take that opportunity when it comes but the universe doesn't manifest stuff it manifests opportunity and through opportunity you can get stuff but it manifests opportunity yeah i made a uh, internet meme the other day it's got like a uh, seven people all, all standing up there with their arms clasped and they're like in the, in the, in the beautiful sunset and that kind of thing like oh and it says, never complain, never fight back, ignore the suffering and pain of others, be a selfish, ignorant wanker, everything will be fine. New Ages. <laughs> <laughs> new Ages, for fuck's sake. Oh, then I love the New Agers who get pissed off at, at, at the New Age movement, but they're still New Agers, but then they're in denial about being New Agers. So then they're like a self-hating New Ager. Like, have you ever heard of Jordan Levine? Wait, 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 would that make them a New Rager? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, that, that, that's going to be a new term. People like Jordan Levine, they're not New Agers, they're New Ragers. I yeah. like that. Because they're New Age, and <laughs> they just happen to be really angry about all sorts of stuff. You're striving to reach the, the fullest of your creative potential. That's perfection. Perfection is perfection for the whole self. You know, for the whole human race to create what we can to the best of our potential. And, and even if you've got flaws, even if you don't have it right, you're still perfect at looking at the world from the perspective that you have, and that perspective is valid. 
And once you can see the validity of that perspective, then you can see that everybody else's perspective is valid as well. And you can honor that. And all the barriers break down with these people. You know, our biggest problem is that our societies are too busy arguing amongst each other while the politicians that we've employed to run our infrastructure are trashing the world and running off to the bank and locking us all down in prison. That's the problem, you know. Our divided societies because we're judging ourselves by all these parameters. We're looking for spirituality in books by other people and all sorts of ways. We're not, we're not really applying ourselves to the world. We're not looking yeah. at ourselves from the correct perspective. We're looking at the world and our relationship to the world and other people from the correct perspective. That's the problem. That's yeah. the whole problem. And, uh, right? and, 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 uh, uh, and all the books tell you is to get the real information and look within, but we're so controlled. People are like, I can't look within. What's in there? I need a babysitter to tell me what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Or, a, or a president or whatever. You know? yeah, people aren't even observing what's, what's in front of them. You know, they it's don't like, understand what look within means. It's the problem. They, don't, they think, oh, what am I going to do? Sit there and meditate. They don't understand what it means. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Everybody's just sitting around, looking at everybody else, judging everybody else, judging everything everybody does, but not <laughs> taking a look at themselves and going, Oh my God! What, bro? I, I just looked in the mirror, man, and I look like a douchebag! <laughs> <laughs> Introspection you know? scares the shit out of people. And, you know, you've got to ask yourself on what was it? There was this great philosopher. I can't remember his name. His, his initials are R A W, Rawl, um, and he says this the story called the Ballad of the Cosmic Schmuck. You know, cosmic meaning big, schmuck meaning idiot for the uh, the uninitiated. And he said, what you've got to do is you've got to sit there and wonder whether you are the cosmic schmuck. Am I the big idiot in all of this? If you're wondering that then you're probably not the cosmic schmuck. But if you never, once in your life, take the time out to look in the mirror and go, am I, am I the cosmic schmuck? Then you probably are. Well, Katarina Edwards is, is joining us here with Vinny Eastwood and Max Egan. Which one is which? I'm the one with the... Which uh, voice? Hey, oh, this, will, this will be great, Max. I'll just tell her that I'm the one with the New Zealand accent and he's the one with the Australian accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll work, I'm sure. You too. You've heard Max Egan before. I've even used some clips in, in, uh, from him in my PSEC stuff. So speak, Max. I know she's heard you before. Max, I know she's heard you before. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that deep voice. Yep. Okay. A little yeah. bit of talk here. Yeah, I'm the one that's a little bit more high pitched and slightly more youthful and exuberant. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you, Vinny and Max. Yeah, it's very nice to meet you too. So, yeah. um, he, you... he's the he, he's the one with the stamina of a kangaroo on nail enhancement products. <laughs> Melon Hansen products, are they like the uh, the Vicodin that you get from Marilyn Manson's products? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, you all sound like you're having a really fun time tonight. We are, we are. I'm glad you could synchronistically join us. Yes, I am too. Very cool. Whatever we change kind of also seems to change us a little, or at least that's what I've seemed to learn. And yeah. it is such a emboldening and empowering thought to know that despite all of those ridiculously massive influences that have cost huge quantities of planning and time and effort in order to put in to prevent us from waking up, people are waking up anyway. Ironically, yeah. in a large part, using the very mechanisms that were built to keep us asleep. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. Like, when I was a kid and a teenager, I used to be so depressed about how I just was not able to fit into the system. Then as I became an adult and started to wake up more, I looked back and I'm like, oh, thank God I couldn't fit in. I would not want to be one of these walking zombies that don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, well, see, that's the thing, you know, people are programmed. That's why you can't hate people that are asleep. That's why you can't 
do what we're doing out of hatred for the elite, out of hatred for anything. If you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. Yeah, well, the problem is we're always looking through past past data to, to find a way out of this, you know what I mean? Like, we're here to create to the best of our potential, and what we're creating is limited by what we believe we can create, by our perception <coughs> of what reality is, you know, which is not real because it's fed to us by this system, and what we're creating is a police state by our inaction. You know what I mean, Every, everything in the planet, everything that we're seeing, all the problems that we're, we're facing, are all because of our lack of creativity in dealing with the situation. We're, we're rummaging around in past data trying to find a way out of this. And really, all we have to do, I believe, is to rediscover ourselves. That's the way out of this whole mess. If you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. Well, I think about all the influencing factors, you know, when you, when you go up, because um, first of all, you get imprinted with a lot of the um, uh, sustained indoctrination that your parents remained imprinted with, and if they'd managed to wake up, then they'll uh, raise you up more or less as a, 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 a well-to-do child. But even if that's the case, you still then uh, can go into school. If you're very lucky, they might homeschool you. But if you are going to school, then of course you've got all the indoctrination that the school puts on you, and all the uh, social conformity and things of that nature. You know how you've got all these little social groups over here with the goths and the and the uh, uh, the jocks and the and the nerds and the so on and so forth and everybody's been putting into these little groups so that nobody's actually really being seen uh, so much as an individual as they are members of a particular group with any associated stigmas or pluses that go with it. If you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. In the context that I'm speaking of what you resist persists, think more electrical, you know, because we do live in an electrical holographic universe. I'm talking about it on the electrical level. Of course, you know, obviously what you're saying holds true. You know, like if you if you sit back and do nothing, then tyranny is just going to continue to expand by default of our complacency. Although if you're but really denial, like, denial, yeah, if you it, you know you resist accepting an idea, that idea it, will still persist. So in that exactly. context, it does. Exactly, that's exactly what I was about to say. Great minds think alike. I was about to say exactly that, and you like spit it out like right as I was thinking it. So, yeah, exactly. Re uh, people don't consider complacency as a form of resistance, but it is because if you ask the question, why am I being complacent? It's a resistance against the idea of looking at knowledge you don't want to see. No, that might hurt my ego, it might scare me. I don't want to look at that, I'm going to cover my ears and hum now, la 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 la. So it's resisting the knowledge of something that makes that something continue to persist. When we resist the knowledge of how this world has been operating and we resist it with our blind complacency. I mean, look at the DEA's war on weed. Has weed gone anywhere? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to resist the idea that there's people out there who smoke weed and get inspired by it and stuff and create music and all of this creative stuff that we can't when our small minds and our alcoholic beverage containing livers. If you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly. Date, 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 date. I mean, if you're protesting yourself being exterminated, why can't you have fun doing it? Yeah, there, there you go, exactly.
it comes to like public speaking in person, it's like I'm not really afraid that anybody's gonna like just dis dislike me or like throw tomatoes at me or whatever. I'm just afraid that Henry Kissinger is gonna magically appear, bend me over, and butt rate me for the glory of the New World Order. Because that's obviously a real fear that any public speaker should naturally have. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do quite a bit of public speaking, and not once have I have I feared the shaft of uh, uh, Mr. Kissinger, who is arguably the world's ugliest ladies' man. Uh, or is he the world's ugliest lady who had a sex change and now looks like a man? That is possible, but we can't prove it. Kind of like how, you know, um, Barack Obama's married to Michael Obama. Um, <coughs> Michael. <laughs> I, I got tired of kids. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, that was a good old joke from way back in the day. What time is bedtime at Michael Jackson's place? When the big hand touches the little hand. Yeah, yeah. Michael Obama was just like, No matter how much I beat my penis, it still won't behave, so I put it to death and became a woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the electric chair. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a weenie roast. If there isn't a lighter side to genocide, you best fabricate one out of nothingness because the consequences of not doing it, of not having a laugh and not being able to retain your sanity can be very dire indeed. Yeah. I think people have got to put down all their ethnic uh, division, they've got to put down all their religious division, they've got to put down all their names of their countries and realise that we're just people. Ideologic, ideological division too, I mean, even within the truth movement, it's like, oh, those weren't planes, those were missiles, no, it was CG holographics, it was a death ray, who cares what it was, you can all agree that criminality happens, so let's come together on, on that and launch some investigations and, you know, let the semantics reveal themselves, but no, instead people are bickering and ditching and it's like, guys, you're only doing what the elites want you to do. Yeah, I'm like correct that yeah, everybody yeah. who disagrees with me is a shill mm -hmm. or an agent or somebody or being paid off by somebody you know just jumping to these conclusions uh, I mean like this has happened with me where I've said something and I've been wrong and instead of saying Vinny you're wrong here's the facts and evidence and me going oh okay my bad sorry about that this is actually what's going on uh, fuck you Vinny you're a stupid moron and you have no intelligence and you're a shill and you're an idiot and you're okay dude you have I'm no back, integrity back and away slowly <laughs> you work for the FBI you were sent here to infiltrate you're trying to screw me over and inform on me, etc, etc, etc. Uh, it's like, what did, what did I say? The, uh, the problem with New Ages is they think that their thoughts alone are enough to change matter, therefore they don't actually have to do anything. It's a complete, yeah. it's a complete misunderstanding of what quantum mechanics is. Exactly. Uh, and it's like, for me, for my money, uh, the thing that we have as humans is imagination. We can picture things in our heads that don't exist. Nobody's ever built it, nobody's ever brought it into reality, yet we can see it. And mm -hmm. if we want to, 
if we put the effort in, we can take that thing that doesn't exist and will it into existence. And what happens then is everybody else that's here with us in the 3D universe can see it, can touch it, can use it, can learn from it, can do something, and it actually inspires this entire mass effect on everything. Uh, allowing for all these little synchronistic occurrences that wouldn't have occurred at all if you just kept that idea in your head, forgot about it, and never did anything. We're here to create and we're being curtailed in that experience. We're not allowed to create. We've got to walk between the lines and do everything we, that we, we can't base our whole lives on supporting this system. And what we, we want to create, we believe we're constrained by the parameters of this system. We're constrained by what we believe reality is and what we, we believe is possible. And when you look at everything, you start getting, if you want to get spiritual about it and start getting scientific about it, you can look at things like the measurement problem and the double slit experiment and you start realizing that we create matter ourselves by observing it. So the possibilities are limitless. We can create any reality we want to create if we can just rediscover ourselves. One thing that, I, that I've told uh, pissed off truthers many times is I've said to them, there's only one difference between a truth, you know, these people in the truth movements, uh, truth, the truth movement and a sheep. Only one difference between the two, and that's the sheep has an excuse for their ignorance, and you don't. <laughs> you know, they're supposed to know better, they're awakened, but they're still, they're, they're, they're worse than the sheep. They can, barely, can, they can feel even more self-righteous than any sheep ever could about remaining in their ignorance. Yeah, totally, bro. Uh, if there isn't a lighter side to genocide, you best fabricate one out of nothingness because the consequences of not doing it, of not having a laugh, and not being able to retain your sanity can be very dire indeed. And you wake up later, and they took your freaking kidney. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like on Charlie the Unicorn. Damn, that was some candy, stuff, man. Candy Mountain, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> this is just so dodgy, that yeah. video, man. Oh my god. Max, have you seen Charlie the Unicorn? Max. No, mate. No, I haven't, uh, haven't seen Charlie. Oh, it's you. creepy. Sean, the non-believer. Sean! Oh, hey, I was talking to Charlie Beach, right, in the Love Police a couple of years ago, and uh, I was talking to him about that video, and he's, he's like, yeah, somebody came up to me in the, in, in, in the thing going, Charlie, Charlie! And I didn't see the video, and I was like, what the, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I, I think that uh, uh, the whole concept of enlightening people is, is, you know, exactly as you've pointed out, it's not to avoid the dark stuff. And, and, I, and I think I, I said words to those effect earlier. And what we were saying just before is also about that look within and people don't know what it means. Um, when I was 12 years old, I came up with a saying, the problem with my generation is that people read between the lines so much that they miss the lines entirely. Hmm, <laughs> true. They're not seeing, they're not understanding, they're not comprehending. And what occurs to me is that a lot of it's not actually their fault, no more than a rabbit's, no more than it's a rabbit's fault for being <coughs> shot through the head with a 22 rifle by a farmer. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> hey, in fact, uh, I was at the uh, uh, music festival, the small music festival, and I was doing uh, volunteering, like for the parking and stuff. And all these people dressed in white costumes and stuff started coming down the hill. And I go, "Where are you guys off to?" And they say, "Oh, we're off to have a white wedding." And I go, "Oh, it's a nice day for one." <laughs> oh God, that's funny. Hey, you, 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 should, you should have you should have asked him where's your hoods. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be in the suburb south of Auckland. <laughs> or in Sherwood Forest. Oh. As far as our existence within creation, we're like uh, we're like kids playing with Lego blocks. The Lego blocks exist outside of space and time. God created those, or Source, or whatever you want to call it, and those exist. But the child can use whatever of those blocks or not that they want and build those blocks into an original creation. But the child did not make the blocks. The child is using the blocks, but that does not mean that what they built, that child built with those blocks isn't original for him. I've got to take a wiki link, 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 wiki link.